hello everyone and thanks for checking out this training video in which we're going to uh, set up a build and deploy pipeline for your iPad projects using Azure DevOps and GitHub. First things first, let's check out the prerequisites. So we will need a new iPad orchestrator. This orchestrator could either be on-prem or pass install service or part of automation suite or automation cloud. For the purpose of this demo, I will be using my cloud orchestrator as you can see, but in future videos, I am also going to demo this for Azure Pass hosted orchestrator. So stay tuned in case you want that content. Continuing the list of prerequisites, we're gonna need an Azure DevOps account. We're gonna need a GitHub account and we're gonna need your iPad studio to actually create the project. So once you have all the prerequisites, we can go ahead and uh, start our demo. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new process. It's going to be a fairly simple process. We're going to call it DevOps test. Okay, I'm gonna put it in my folder. Test for Azure DevOps pipelines okay it's gonna be windows legacy and we're just going to create this okay so once this is opened what i want to do is add a simple activity let's say a message box so we can know that the process is actually ran and let's add here a text called i ran okay everything seems to be fine um and now what you would usually do to put this uh, in orchestrator would be to publish it however in the spirit of uh, having source control and having other colleagues working on the same uh, process we will want to use source control like github for example so the next step now will actually be to connect our uipad studio with github and uh, push this project into a github repository so in this case let's go to github and create a brand new repository an empty repository called devops test for the purpose of our experiment this will be public we're going to go we're going to create this repository and it is created it's giving us the https uh, url right here which we're going to copy and we're going to go back into our UiPad studio right over here where it says add to source control and we're going to select git init because we want to initialize this as a new repository we're gonna select the folder in which we're in because that's our uh, project folder and we're gonna add the name of our first commit okay then we're going to commit and push and it's gonna tell us that it, it's not finding any remote repositories. This is where we're going to paste our GitHub uh, repository, give it a name. We're going to name it GitHub DevOps and add it. And once it's added, we're going to save. Now it's going to push this project into GitHub. And if we go ahead and check GitHub and refresh, we should see our project here, as you can see, first commit. Okay, so the first part of this demo is finalized. We've got our project in GitHub. Now, what we want to do is actually build it and publish it to our orchestrator using Azure DevOps. So now what we need to do is finally go into our Azure DevOps and create a new project. The project will be named DevOps test. Okay, it's going to be private. Now that the project is created, what we actually want to do is install the UiPath integration plugin for Azure DevOps. This is a free plugin created by UiPath, which will contain all the tasks you'll need to actually build the project as you can see this uh, extension is already installed in my organization but if it's not the, the same in your case just uh, go to the steps here and you should have it installed now going back to azure devops we're going to create our pipeline for the purpose of this test again i'm gonna use the classic editor and it's going to bring us to this page here we're going to select the source the source will be github as uh, that's where we deployed our project we're going to uh, authorize our github connection and connect our azure devops with our github and once that's done it's going to show all your repositories here so i'm going to choose the one we just created devops test 
the main branch for it and hit continue. It's got a lot of uh, templates here, but I'm going to choose start with an empty job. The first thing that you will want to configure is the agent specification. Basically here you tell it what type of machine you want to build and publish your project. You can either select one from Azure's uh, machines that are provided by them. As you can see here, you have a few images or you can create your own agent pool and use that. I'm going to be using my own uh, pool right here that I created earlier. We won't be covering how to create your, your own agent pool here. You can either use one of Azure's or uh, look online how to create an agent pool for Azure DevOps. So once we selected this, we're going to go to agent job and actually tell it what we want it to do. The agent pool will be inherited from pipeline. So it's going to use whatever we select here. And for now, I think we're good. What we want to do next is actually add the steps which will uh, build and deploy our project. We're going to search for UI path here. So it's going to show us all the tasks we have in the plugin and we're going to use first Firstly, the pack uh, step and then the deploy step. We're going to add both of them right now and then we're going to configure them. So let's go in the pack step for now. We're going to choose a versioning method. This is how our project will be versioned whenever it's being built in Azure DevOps. You can either define a custom package versioning, you can create your own variable and uh, like define your own rules of versioning or use the version specified in the project file or auto generate the package version. I'm going to go with this first option. So Azure DevOps will create a new version every time it will build the project again. In project path, we're going to have to give it our project.json if this is in the root folder as it is in my case, as you can see project.json is in the root folder. So I'm just going to reference it here. The output type of the project will be a process project because that's what we're building but you also have the option to build libraries, tests, objects, and whatever. Now the orchestrator connection is something that we'll need to create because we're going to use this when packing and also while deploying. I'm going to go through that immediately, but for now we're going to skip this, uh, this orchestrator connection and create it later. This output path will be where the built project will be put. So after it's going to build whatever we give it in GitHub, it's going to put the artifact into to its uh, staging directory slash output. This is important because we need to know where to read it from in the deploy step. Okay, now this is almost fully configured. We're just missing the orchestrator connection, but we'll get to that pretty soon. Now on the deploy step, we're going to again have to complete the orchestrator connection. So it knows on what orchestrator to deploy it. Then for the project path, we're going to actually copy the output path from here and give it to the deploy step. The orchestrator folder will be the actual folder in orchestrator where you actually want to publish this. So we're going to go to our orchestrator and search for the folder where we want this deployed. Okay, so my folder will be named shared in this uh, scenario. Uh, environments, we don't need to complete this because as it also says here, this is just for classic folders. And the last thing we need to complete will be the entry point. So basically, which will, what will be the name of the file? Azure DevOps needs to tell orchestrator to run this project. In our case, it's gonna be main XML because we didn't do any other modifications. So since this pipeline is almost done, what we still need to configure is our orchestrator connection. So let's click on this new button right here and it's going to open up this window. Now here we see we have multiple ways of connecting to orchestrator. Basic authentication is still present here, but I wouldn't recommend on using it because it's going to be decommissioned really, really soon. I'm going to put on the screen exactly when by Microsoft. So uh, it won't be a uh, best practice to use basic authentication. So we're going to skip that for now. What we have as options are token based authentications and external application. For the purpose of this example, we're going to go with an external application setup to connect to the orchestrator. As you can see, you're going to have some things to, to fill up in here. So for the orchestrator URL, what we want to add is actually just cloud.uipad.com. We don't need to add all the extra stuff in the URL because it should know how to get them on its own. 
Uh, identity URL is not needed in this scenario. It is only needed for uh, platform as a service deployment as in platform as a service, the identity URL is most of the times different than the orchestrator URL. So this is the way uh, you tell it where to go specifically for identity. When it finds that this is cloud, it will know exactly where to go. So you don't need to fill this up. Now the account name, the account name you can take it from here. It's uh, this one after cloud called UiPath Lucian in my case. Just going to paste it here. For the application ID and secret, what we actually want to do is go into our UiPath uh, cloud and create an external application. So we'll go back into our uh, cloud account, go to admin. And once we're here, we're just going to click on external applications. You might have the new experience, the new UI experience. By the way, you can just uh, click this little uh, toggle here to switch between them. So I'm now on my external applications and I'm going to create a new application that we're going to use here. It's going to be named Azure DevOps. It's going to be a confidential application. And we're going to add some scopes here, which will actually make it work. Be careful because you, you're going to want to add application scopes, but initially we're going to select the resource. We're going to need orchestrator API access because this is what, what we'll use. Then go into application scopes and add one by one all the scopes that I'm going to add. So the scopes we need are Once we added all of these, we're just going to save this and hit add. And this will create our actual uh, external application. We're going to copy the app ID from here and paste it directly into the application ID in Azure DevOps. And then we're going to copy our secret and paste it in the application secret field. Also, we're going to reopen this uh, app for a second, hit edit right here and copy the scopes which will paste here in the application scopes last thing we'll need to add here is the tenant and the tenant can be actually taken from uh, the url once we go to orchestrator you're gonna see it right here in my case it's called default tenant so this is what i'm going to paste here then give it a name i'm going to call it age uh, devops service connection last thing we actually need to do is to tick this uh, security uh, radio button right here which says grant access permission to all pipelines and save this it's going to create our service connection and it's going to populate here devops sc as you can see also we're going to reference it here in the pack step also the pack step does not have the orchestrator connection mandatory why does it have it here because you might want to build some project which have custom libraries and the libraries might exist on the orchestrator you want to deploy to so if you want when packing the project to actually use a custom library it will need the orchestrator connection here to be able to read that library here is here it's not mandatory because your project the one that you want to to pack might not have a private library a personal library so as it says here a service connection to orchestrator instance that has on its feed dependencies of the projects to be packed so in our case it's not needed as we have a really simple project but as a best practice i'm gonna add it here so now as you can see everything has been configured here so what we have left to do is to save and run this pipeline before I run this, I just want to make sure that my um, agent is running. So I'm going to go on my VM where I have my agent and actually start up the DevOps build agent. Depending on what you selected, if you're using an Azure machine or your own build agent, you are or are not required to, to do this step. Okay, so this is up and running, it's listening for jobs. Now what I can do is actually run my pipeline and see what's going to happen so i'm on my pipeline here i'm going to save and queue and then i'm going to click on run right here after this is displayed i'm going to open up the logs and in the meantime i'm also going to open up the vm as you can see the job was uh, sent to my build agent and it's saying running job agent job one and once this is open we're going to hit on the job right here to see the actual logs so it's assigning the build agent then it's pulling the information from our github repository then it's actually uh, packing our project and then 
the last step deploy it will deploy it into our cloud orchestrator under the folder we set up and whatever now all that's left to do is going to our orchestrator here and refresh and we're going to see our devops main saml with the version that azure devops uh, automatically created for us with the entry point as we set up and whatever so yeah that's how you create an uh, azure devops pipeline to publish your projects to orchestrator more elegantly you can go ahead and edit this even more you can go to triggers right here and enable continuous integration on uh, the main branch and save this uh, what this will do would be that every time it will detect a new uh, push in github it'll, it will automatically run the pipeline so let me show you what i mean i'm going to go to pipelines this is my uh, recently run pipeline right here that it completed successfully and now i'm going to go uh, to studio and actually edit this a bit call it test sequence i'm going to save this and this should detect a change right here i'm going to click on this change it's going to see the difference in main saml i'm going to commit to this will be the name of my commit and then commit and push and once this is uh, committed then the changes should be visible in github right here once i refresh this see 17 seconds ago and once this change is noticed by azure devops it should go ahead and run this pipeline automatically with the continuous integration as you can see it's running right now it's doing the exact same thing just that this time it will deploy a new version because it uh, packed the project again so right here you can see we run uh, 1173 whatever and if we refresh will be on the new version thank you everyone so much for watching this clip i hope you found some value into it if not please comment down below any question you might have and until next time have fun automating goodbye